How on earth did we manage to get our R32 powered Mark II Golf to Snetterton for a track day when only three days prior it looked like this? We are at Snetterton Race Circuit for mine and the R32's first ever track day. We've had to do a fair bit of work to get to this point, so let's go through what we had to do. With the gearbox oil on our R32 Mark II not having been changed since the engine conversion was carried out in 2017, we felt prior to a track day it was important to drain the old oil and replenish with new Redline 75W90 fully synthetic limited slip diff rated gear oil. The oil is filled until it comes out of the fill hole. The front brakes on this R32 are 280mm discs with OEM pads, and whilst they do stop very well, we felt it necessary to improve stopping capability by changing the pads to EBC Yellow Stuff items, which are a budget-friendly fast road entry-level track pad. Whilst the caliper carrier is off, it would be a false economy to not grease the slider pins and not forgetting to grease the areas of the pads where they contact the carrier to help prevent brake squeal. The existing DOT4 fluid that is in the system is drained and then replenished with Super DOT4 which has a far higher boiling point so should be able to withstand high speed braking before suffering brake fade. The system is once again bled to remove any air bubbles so the brakes are ready for track action. Finally, we changed the allegedly reconditioned power steering pump for another used genuine item as it sounded like I had fitted a supercharger. It was at this point we spotted another leak, but this time it was serious. Upon investigation we discovered the thermostat housing had split, allowing coolant to pass the o-ring. I was in a bit of a muddle. Not only was I at Ben's house 30 miles from home with no way of making it back with this terminal leak, but today was Sunday with the track day on Wednesday, but Monday was a public holiday. I had no means of getting a new part in time. We opted to use sump sealer around the face of the thermostat housing, ensuring the o-ring was completely covered too. Whilst still wet, we reattached to the car, waited for it to cure for 4 hours and hoped for the best. After 4 hours we replenished the coolant to then find it leaking out of the coolant temp sender. Upon more investigation we discovered this time that the o-ring on the only 3 year old genuine VAG sender had perished and contracted so the o-ring was actually smaller in diameter than the shoulder of the sender. We managed to source a replacement o-ring of the required size from a middle of little box of o-rings. We fit it, replenish coolant, again, and with no apparent further leaks and no chance of the thermostat housing arriving in time for Wednesday's track day, we do what any sensible person would do. We take it to Snetterton to send it. We arrive at Snetterton and despite all the issues we had had days prior and the temporary repair, there were no leaks and the car had made its two hour journey faultlessly. First port of call was to sign on and then take the noise test, which I'll be honest, I was a little nervous about. Sorry, what's the maximum revs? Uh, about 7,000. 7,000? Yeah. Uh, five and a half. Please. Okay. Without a working rev counter, a cautious bit of guesswork was my friend at this point. 96. What did that come out as? 96. Oh, excellent. And what's the limit? Sorry. Uh, 105. 105. Oh, Sorry, right. 102 this evening. Oh, 102. Okay, nice one. Thank you very much. That's a noise test pass. Quite relieved about that. I thought uh, <laughs> I thought I might be in for a bit of fun and games there. But yeah, 96 decibels. And the noise limit is 102. With the noise test passed, I had a look around at some of the other cars on track. Our R32 Mark II Golf is by no means slow, but there were some monsters at this place. Once upon a time, 200 brake horsepower seemed to be sufficient in a hatchback. The cars here were pushing out 400 horsepower upwards. With Mark being here who had been on this track before, it was time for some useful advice. So, Mark, you've been here at Snetterton before. Have you got any advice for young Alistair here? On his first track day? Take it easy, you know. Yeah. Work up to it, don't go flat out. You know. Be gentle with that right foot. Yeah. Don't go flat out, okay, good okay. good advice. Start off with and then work up to it. Okay. Uh, no. Is that so I don't know we take it? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs>
Might be, uh, and then yeah, just you know, enjoy it at the end of the day. It's amazing. Yeah. What's what's your uh, favourite corner here, Mark? Ah, oh, I quite like the chicane after the long straight. That was quite funny. Ah, so that's the one. Then. One for Alistair to watch, watch out, out for you. Yeah. Curling that because that's quite high. Okay, so that's yeah. right. Okay, uh, that's the one that puts a bit of fear on me, having played like. Project cars. Yeah, so, yeah. That's, this last corner. Yeah. That's the one. The, that's the one with the access escape road, isn't it? It is, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. So. Okay. Come on. Yeah. And this this last corner is a bit kind of weird in the gates, but it's okay in real life. So, yeah. okay. so raise your hand if you've used the escape road in the past. <laughs> hey, there we go. There we go. Right. So yeah, until you've used that, then you're uh, you're just a novice. Any uh, any cars you've got your eye on this evening? To something that you might have a fun competition with later. So everything's out horsepower, mate. But out horsepower, oh yeah, no. MX5s? Depends how stacked, depends how modified they are. Right. That one, the black one over there, maybe. It's smoking, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, so it's, it's, it's probably had some mods done to it. It's got. We'll see. Yeah. So if they've, if they've lost a few horsepower, maybe. Yeah. You're yeah, definitely not a percent for. Yeah. <laughs> there's, a, there's, <laughs> a, there's a Fiesta ST, which I'd like to think. I'll be able to keep up with it at least. Yeah, unless it's got a, a boosty snail attached to it, some kind yes. of uh, spoolie boy, maybe. <laughs> There's a, looks like a Jordan Honda over there as well, or something. I don't know what it is. It's like a, it's a B16 at least. Well, yeah, the uh, Jordan, the, the yellow ones, aren't they? Well, it's, an orange, it's a bright orange one, so it's that type of... Oh, that era? Yeah, that e, era. EK Civic. Yeah, okay, yeah. yeah, one of those ones, so that's, that's something I'm going to try mm. to at least. Well, we'll check back in later and see what if your opinions have changed. And the cars are still there. Yeah, yeah. you're like that. That uh, Cleo handed my ass. Oh no! <laughs> Find out. Tune in later. I'll just get out my nice subtle helmet, which I've decided to get. A lovely bug attractant. Oh yeah. It was now time to set off on our sighting lap. Time for us to go in, ready for my first time ever on track in anger, which I was being really brave about. I'm shitting it now. Fortunately, in Ben, I had a great teacher with me. Right, here we go. So, don't use second gear at any point, just get used to the track. Yep. Straight away, it was apparent I was perhaps a bit too eager. That's a bit fast. <laughs> now everything's cold. the services of one of the track day instructors to see how I could improve. As it turns out, there was plenty of room for improvement. 
I don't think that came as any surprise though, with this being my first ever track day. Downship, breaking and down again, breaking and down again, hold the brake just as you turn it in, aim for the red sausage, use the road on the exit, and back to the right. Increase the power as you straighten up, alright? Yep. So keep the car on the right, don't change, just brake straight. As the end of the kerb, it's a gripping point. Yep. That's quite good there, the end of the kerb. Come to the left, keep going, a little bit of gas, and then brake and down one, and use the road on the exit, go nice and wide on the exit. Watch and try and avoid tyre squeeze. That's friction to the tyre, the tyre mat, head slowly down, apex, hold it a little bit longer, then let the car run out of its flare. Right, stay in the middle of the road here, just stay in the middle. And then ease it across by the red and white curbing, and then stay on the right. Open up the steering for that apex and increase the power on the way out. Keep on the right. Steer forward, you and past you. So keep it in the middle of the road on the initial turn. In. Stay in the middle, stay in the middle, stay in the middle. And just aim for the end of the curve. And then use the road on the way out. Okay, then go to the brake. Early apex, let the car run out wide. And stay out wide, don't fight it, stay wide. Don't fight the car, don't fight it, stay left. Hold the brake, middle, end of the curve for your apex. And then use the road on the way out, nice. It's a nice, nice, nice Long and short of it, I was far too aggressive on the turn in. I was too aggressive on the brakes and also held the brakes for too long, as we found out when we came back into the pits. Okay. Like we do the back straight, do a single shift, yep. turn, single shift, it turns the S's, it's yep. called Brandon Nelson, but it turns the S's on the back straight. You think you've got enough time to have a cup of tea <laughs> in between the two corners, yeah, yeah. whereas if you try and block change in the middle of it, it gets really harassing. Yeah, yeah. And the complex, the, the inner field complex, mm -hmm. if you can do that in one gear... Having learnt setting fire to my brakes perhaps isn't a wise move, I went out as passenger, this time with Ben as driver. Ben has a lot of track experience, so another great learning opportunity for me to see and practice how it's done. <laughs> Once again, another poor example of track etiquette, this time being dive bombed up the inside just as we were about to clip the apex. Clear the Is it clear on it? Stuff to down, that is. No, I think we ended on horse power there. Not so clear. So that's it. Unfortunately, Ben's session was cut short thanks to a red flag, but this gave us an opportunity to have a chat about what could be improved on the car. I think this had sticky tyres, maybe some 205 track tyres. Yeah. We'll just get back to wait. I think it must be the roll bars. The roll bars are making up for the, uh, the springs. Yeah. It's, it's not really doing anything, you, you know, it's not washing out wide, other than the tyres are red hot and they're not. Um, you have got the adjustment, so you've got uh, you've got a three-way adjustable rear um, roll bar. I have, yeah. But the only the only thing that you could do with that is if it rains, put it on wherever the softest thing is. There you go, Ben. So you've just had a drive of the car. What did you think of it? <laughs> pretty good for a road car. It's yeah. pretty much weighed what a road car would be in terms of handling dampers, tyres, pretty good because they're mild tyres. They are, they're just standard road Michelin uh, pilot spots. Good, good old 280s. Yeah. I think because it, it's, uh, it's all a balance, apart from maybe the engine's a little bit, a little bit over engined. Yeah. 3.2 and one. But you've got good road tyres, you've got yellow stuff which are entry towards track 
stuff. Yeah. And you've got softer road springs, VC dampers, and you've got the big roll box. Yeah. So I think the handling and chassis elements are working together quite well. Yeah. It's the tyres which are almost not letting it down, but they're sort of they're the bits that are kind of like the first point to fail. Yeah. Almost. And that's what you know the cars we've got here. If we just pan over there. <laughs> we've got well, and, and take one side step, and you get a noble one form of the power and then whatever, 720, well, <laughs> yeah, little, just pick a number. <laughs> and the Porsche. Porsche. Yeah, there's an M4 next door. Yeah. Yeah, so, you know, there's not much you can do against those if they're experienced track leaders. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Just got to find the, uh, the right time to get out of the way. It was my time to go out again and to see how much information my little saturated sponge brain had taken on. After a few laps I'd really started getting confident and taking corners far better than I could have imagined. Last session on track, I took the opportunity to go in Mark's stripped out 1.6 track car whilst Ben took the reins of the R32 for the last time. Let's see how that goes. Ben follows the 1.6 track car in the R32 for the first few laps. track ahead, the shackles were off. It was time for Ben to wring the R32's neck.
issues prior to the track session with the thermostat housing, the temporary repair and the little o-ring on the coolant temp sender, plus all the radiator work we've done, coolant temperatures remained at a constant indicated normal with no signs of overheating or leaks. Just been out in Mark's 1.6 track car. Wow, what, what fun that was. The amount of speed that you can carry through the corners is, is unbelievable. But like the first, I can't remember the names of the corners, but the first corner after the, the, the pitch, Senna, yeah. Is it Senna corner? Yeah, well, Senna straight is that one. Yeah. What, we were getting 65, maybe 70 around the corner. Mark's in there doing 80 around there. <laughs> so, yeah, it's, uh, that's crazy. Ooh. It just needs more power. It does, yeah. But that, that was great. I enjoyed that. I enjoyed being in there like a proper bona fide track chassis. That's really good fun, so it's quite, quite good to tell the difference between the two, so yeah. So that is it, we've finished our first track day at Snetterton, probably one of the most demanding on, on cars because of the, the high speed, the, the long braking corners, and yeah, it's, uh, it's been great. The cars have survived, one spin, but yeah, <laughs> been a good day. Thank you very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you next time at Southeast Party Golf.